Hi, I'm Michel Dufresne. I'm an independent consultant in the New York City area, specializing in rule-based business application. This is part two of a three-part series on how we can use the semantic web technologies for specifying the, the domain model of rule-based business application. In the first part, we looked at the web ontology language, which is a W3C standard, and in particular, uh, we looked at the LDL, which stands for Description Logic. Description Logic is a uh, based on a formal logic-based semantic, and we look in the case of AL um, at the six class descriptor um, that are available for building um, complex um, class uh, as expression uh, of other classes. For example, uh, we looked at, um, at the definition of the impressionism art collector being defined as the um, intersection between art collector and all of the individual that has at least one artifact of type impressionist painting. And in turn, impressionist painting class is defined as the intersection of late 19th century French painting style class and the artifacts with paint stroke of unmixed color. Now, if we look at it from a visual diagram, <coughs> we see that um, the impressionist art collector uh, being defined as the conjunctions of those um, two uh, class descriptor that impressionist art collector must be a subclass of art collector which means that every impressionist art collector must be as well a art collector since art collector as their artifact of being of type artifact then it follows that the uh, impressionist painting must also be of type artifact in order to uh, comply to that axiom. And also, impressionist painting was uh, defined as a conjunction of two classes. Uh, the late 19th century painting style um, class and artifact with paint stroke of unmixed color. It um, logically follows that impressionist uh, painting class must be a subclass of all those three classes in order for all of the axioms to be uh, true at the same time. So we see that when we express classes um, with class expression that has very clear semantic meaning, uh, we can deduce the type hierarchy or the class subclass relationship of the domain model in order to uh, have the class axioms to remain valid based on description logic. Now, to write rules on top of those uh, classes, uh, we need to see um, you know, the distinction really between a description logic formalism and a logic programs formalism. In description logic, um, it complies to the open world semantic, uh, which means that it does not assume that the information is complete in the knowledge base. So it, uh, it is said to be a monotonic uh, formalism, which means that as you add more information uh, to the knowledge base, it will not invalidate the logical deductions that were obtained previously. While logic programs, it complies to the closed world semantic, which is a well-known semantic used in relational databases. Uh, where it assumed the information to be complete, so the lack of information is essentially a negation. And for that, uh, logic programs are uh, said to be non-monotonic because if you add mo new information to your knowledge base, then um, it may invalidate 
some deductions that were taken uh, previously. So there is a mapping between uh, the description logic um, entailments and the logic programs uh, constructs. Um, this mapping is actually well described in this paper here. Now, wh what it really means, uh, you know, open world versus the closed world semantic, what's the real distinction between the two? Well, essentially, it comes down to how negation is applied. In the open world semantic, uh, negation uh, used is the classical form of negation, with not A means that A is false. So um, if A is unknown, then neither A or not A is true. While the closed world semantic used negation as failure, with not A means that A is false or unknown. Uh, basically, not A means um, A is believed to be false. So that A and not A is always either true or false. S uh, as a consequence, when information is added to the knowledge base, um, some logical entailments needs to be adjusted to take consideration of the new information because uh, what when A was believed to be false now could um, be found to be true, uh, which is a consequence of the non-monotonic nature of negation. Now, to write rules on top of ontologies is essentially a two-step process. First is um, you, you choose your ontology and construct all of your uh, class constructors and axiom in the ontology. And you can use a uh, description logic reasoner to ensure that the model is consistent. Then you could add rules that use negation as failure to make the whole model non-monotonic and to make it consistent with behavior as expected uh, that we have in relational databases, for example. However, um, care must be taken to avoid adding rules that are class constructor axi or uh, class axioms. These rules uh, should be put into the ontology so that we could ensure that the ontology remain consistent. So that completes the uh, second segment of uh, the uh, three-part uh, presentation. Uh, the next segment will talk about how this can be used as a foundation for a model-driven uh, architecture. Thank you.